Hi, welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda, and at some point, I'm pretty sure you'll see my puppy Watson strolling around in the kitchen. And if you're really lucky, you'll see Magic, my tuxedo cat. To get started today, I am going to be cutting up this onion, and while I'm cutting it, I'm gonna explain a little bit about today's menu choice. So I actually wanted to go to the process of cutting up an onion because it's part of the story. So, just like a lot of people, I only recently started watching YouTube as a regular like form of entertainment with COVID. Before that, I used YouTube just for information, you know, when I need to look up how to fix whatever, right? But there's a lot of really interesting content creators on YouTube that have stories to tell. And one of the first channels that caught my attention was the channel called Squirmy and Grubs. Squirmy and Grubs, who are Hannah and Shane, they, their channel is about disability accessibility awareness and interabled relationships. They are a really funny, delightful couple. And Shane is in a wheelchair and Hannah is able-bodied. So on one of their videos, they don't cook very much. They like to go out to eat and they do a lot of travel vlogging too. Uh, the skin on this onion is not wanting to peel. On one of their videos that I was watching, they were making, they were cooking and they were making a French onion soup. And I was so worried that Hannah was going to cut her fingers up when she was making this soup and she was chopping up the onion. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I wanted to, you know, in case I'm ever lucky enough that Hannah actually watches this video, I wanted to show her a little bit safer way to cut an onion. So I just peeled the outside and I cut it in half. I left the root end intact. And with my hand on the outside of the onion, I'm just going to make some cuts in. I'm not going all the way down to the root end. So the other reason why I decided to make tonight's menu, which is these chicken garlic spring rolls that you saw in the title, is because a couple of days ago, Shane posted a video that was about eight and a half minutes long. And the title was like a letter, open letter to lean cuisine, but basically it was an ode to his very favorite frozen dinner which is called Shane Burha, and I kneel before you humbly, broken and devastated, hoping with all of my being that you might take mercy upon me. Which is called these chicken garlic spring rolls. So as you can see now, I've turned my onion and I'm chopping down. And as I do that, I get perfectly diced onion. So this is just one way to cut an onion. So poor Shane, his very, very favorite frozen dinner is being discontinued. And so of course, out of curiosity, so now I've put it down and now I'm just chopping because I hate wasting any little bits of food. So I will chop the heck out of it to get all the onion. And then once you get down to the root, I'll toss that into the sink. Anyway, so he, um, his favorite TV dinner is being discontinued and he's very, very upset. The first time, and he's mentioned this dinner on his channel several times, and the first time that he ever ate it, it gave him like a warm, fuzzy feeling. Like it probably maybe harkened back to a childhood memory or something. I'm not sure I quite remember the origin story, but because of that warm, fuzzy feeling, he called these chicken spring rolls his warmies. And so that was kind of their inside joke family name for this dinner and you know Hannah cooks dinner for him also notice how I'm holding my knife I put my finger here and my thumb here it's choking up on the handle that gives you much more control and the tip of my knife stays down so you know Hannah prepares his food for him most times and he will ask her to make warmies for him and so I looked this up on the internet as one does out of curiosity, he's like, what is this TV dinner? And I read the ingredients and I was like, oh, those would actually be fairly easy to make. The hardest part is gonna be this step, which is the caramelizing of the onions, which does take a while. But the rest, I think we can throw together 
pretty fast and easy. Now I have never eaten this TV dinner. I actually, you know, don't tend to go for frozen entrees very often. So I'm taking a guess at what the end product is going to be. But like I said, I got a ingredient list from the back of the box. And so we are going to try to reconstruct Shane's warmies. And I hope that one day, you know, they will be able to make this and hopefully it will taste at least somewhat like the dish that he is craving. All right, so we're gonna take this big pile of onions over to the stove and get them sauteing. All right, because I know that Hannah does not cook very often, I am going to try to keep this recipe as simple as possible. Well, and longtime subscribers of my channel know that I actually don't really ever cook with recipes and I wing it as I go most nights. So I'm gonna start off with a generous, there is a piece of onion there, a generous couple tablespoons of butter and my skillet is cold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the onions inside. I'm gonna turn the temperature to low to medium, but on the lower side. And this step, there is no rushing this step. This, if you want good caramelized onions, you just gotta take patience and it's gonna take a while. So we will, you know, through the magic of editing, not show this whole part, but we do have to gather up a few more ingredients. So we'll get that going while these are sauteing. And to help break down the onions a little quicker, I am gonna go ahead and add like a teaspoon of salt. So they are called garlic chicken spring rolls. So I've got about four cloves of garlic. And if you like a lot of garlic, use more. If it's an ingredient you don't like, you can use less. You could use some jarred garlic and put it in here or squeeze garlic if to keep this even more simple, but I've got a bunch of garlic that I need to use up. So for this ingredient, I am using fresh, but yeah, the jarred stuff is pretty good. So in order to peel garlic more quickly, a good thing to do is just smash it with the side of your knife that will kind of pop open the paper part of the garlic and it will just peel right off. Okay. so. This piece has like a little piece that is brown. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Don't want that in my dish. And I'm going to just use a garlic press. And since we're keeping this at a very low temperature, the garlic won't burn and it'll help like infuse garlic flavor throughout all that buttery sauce. And so it's good to put it in at this step. And like I said, I'm totally making this dish up as I go. I looked at the photo and the ingredient list and going from there. So hopefully I am doing a close facsimile of what Shane is so craving. And I'm very curious to taste it myself. It's, they sound delicious. All right, so this is gonna take a good half hour or so. So we'll be back in a little while. Pro tip, whenever you use a garlic press, clean it out right away because dried on garlic is such a pain. And just taking the two seconds to rinse this and dry it off and stick it back in your utensil drawer, so worth it. As some of y'all might have seen in my last video, Watson is recovering from knee surgery. He has his brace off, but he's still being pretty low key. <clears throat> he's hobbling around and getting around. We're pretty sure he's recovering really well. So the onions have been sauteing for, the onions and garlic have been sauteing for about 15 minutes now. And I'm gonna let them go for a little bit longer and then we'll add some more ingredients. But I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're enjoying this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more of me just having fun in the kitchen i like to 
wing it and show you how the creative process of cooking goes and how I create dishes on the fly a lot of times. So yeah, we have a lot of fun here. So hit that subscribe button so I can grow my channel and we can have so much fun talking food. These onions could go further. Okay, so you can see they're starting to get brown around the edges and that's good. We don't want them to be high heat where they get crispy. This is gonna be like a soft, this is the caramelization soft where they're breaking down because you don't want a crunchy onion in this type of dish. So they're looking really good. We could go a lot further with them. Like you can get them very brown. I'm gonna go ahead at this stage and add the carrots because I actually, I want my carrots to break down a little bit too so that they're not crunchy. So I went ahead and bought a bag of julienned carrots because again, I'm trying to, I mean, TV dinners are supposed to be convenience food and caramelizing onions that take, you know, 20 to 30 minutes isn't necessarily convenient, but I am trying to take some shortcuts and keep this as easy as possible. So I'm going to add a couple of handfuls of these carrots so that they can break down too because again, I don't want a crunchy carrot in this soft, uh, Shane has always described these as very soft and warm string rolls. I'm still on like medium low. I'm gonna stir these in and give them a chance to cook down a little bit and then that'll the onions will still keep caramelizing. That's why I added it at this point. So let's give this about five minutes or so to soften the carrots. Actually, at this point, if I go ahead and put it down all the way to low because I don't want it to burn and put the lid on them. Oh, I got the wrong size lid. Put the lid on them, then the carrots will also kind of steam and it'll just go faster because I'm trying to get dinner done. All right, you can tell the carrots are now soft and softened up. So we're going to add some spinach. So I'm still on low here and I've got some spinach. The chef in me wants to add some artichoke hearts or Italian seasonings, but I'm trying to keep it true to what the ingredient list was on the back. Open sesame. Okay. Some of these leaves are not good, so I'm gonna toss them. Spinach will, oh goodness. These spinach leaves have actually been in my refrigerator for a week, and I knew I needed to use them up soon. So I'm just trying to pick out the ones that are good. <laughs> so they do wilt down, so you want to put in more than you think you need. So, uh, unfortunately, sorry guys, some of these are wilted, but there's still a lot of good ones. So I would use half to up to the whole container and this was five ounces. But we're using about half or a little bit more than half because like I said, some of those weren't super great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more salt. I like to season as I go, it adds layers of flavor. And some pepper. All right, so we're gonna wilt this spinach down and we will be adding some chicken. And so today I decided to go ahead and like I said, we're gonna keep it simple. And so I'm gonna use some canned chicken meat. For a recipe like this, canned chicken works really well. I like this Kroger premium chicken and I'm sure other stores have a similar thing because the only ingredients are chicken and salt. So if you are someone who's watching their sodium, canned chicken might not be the best choice because they do put a lot of sodium in them. But I like this brand because there are no other preservatives. Salt is the only preservative. So I'm gonna add two cans, these are the large cans, of these canned chicken breasts. I use canned chicken sometimes in soups too especially like they sell them in a smaller can. And if I just wanna make a small soup just for myself for lunch one day, then I will use some canned chicken. And then the last ingredient of the filling is going to be Parmesan cheese. So at this point, I'm just trying to break up some of the chunks of this chicken because I'm making some pretty small wraps. See a little bit more spinach probably would have been good, but 
We're just using what I have. And I'm gonna add some shredded Parmesan. Now, I went and used the, the stuff that's in that green jar that you like sprinkle on top of pizza sometimes. I think for a dish like this, um, that wouldn't be my first choice. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Look, like these bags never open right. Anyway, but this is pre shredded Parmesan, and I think this will be a great type of Parmesan to use. If you've got a fresh block of Parmesan, of course, that also would be great. You could grate your great Parmesan. <laughs> okay, I'm not even that funny. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and put Parmesan to your heart's content. We'll taste it and see what else we think this needs. Oh man, it's looking good. Get that Parmesan kind of melty. I still got it on low. Again, I am like so tempted to add some cream cheese or some Monterey Jack cheese, like just to make things complicated, but we're sticking with the basics. All right, I'm gonna get me a like a bite that has a little bit of everything in it, maybe. Well, no spinach. Mmm, that's good. Yeah, I, I want more Parmesan in there. Mmm, that's good. I think like I'm wanting it to be a little bit more creamy. We're just gonna use this whole bag. So that's a six ounce bag of Parmesan. Uh, oh, that onion I used at the beginning was a sweet onion. I'm not sure if I said that. I just figured the sweet onion would put the best flavor profile in this. All right, adding that much extra cheese really helps kind of bring this together and make it a tight filling because there's no flour or anything like that uh, to bring the filling together. It's all relied on that cheese. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our spring rolls. So I have my filling here and I've got some wonton wrappers. Now, when I got the idea for this video, I did want to use the big square ones because I thought that would be a better size, but uh, my grocery store apparently stopped carrying them and I didn't have time to go around looking at other stores for the big ones. So I've got the little wonton wrappers. So you could make these in the big size and it would be perfectly good. So I'm spraying this with olive oil. Um, yeah, because Shane posted his video like four days ago in internet time with reaction videos. That's like, you know, might as well have been four months ago. So we're getting this content out as fast as I can, especially with editing. So I'm gonna take one of these little sheets. You wanna be careful because they do stick together and you want it to be very thin. And we're just going to scoop in some of the filling. Now on the Lean, Lean Cuisine package, the rolls were open-ended. So I am going to keep these open-ended. Oh got the water. All right, so you want a little bowl of water or egg whites will work great too. And I'm just going to rub some water and that'll help seal them. And then I'm gonna put them on this cookie sheet that I greased. These, I've got my convection oven set to 425. These would be perfect in an air fryer too, if you have an air fryer, but I do not have one of those yet. They're very similar to convection oven, so Either way, and if you don't have either one of them, just put them in a regular oven at a high temperature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap up a bunch of these and be back in a minute. Okay, now that I've got them all rolled up, am I filming? Yes, I am. I'm going to then now again, spray them with an olive oil spray and we're gonna stick them in the oven and keep an eye on them, but I'm guessing probably around 10 minutes to make them crispy and golden brown and we might need to rotate them once, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna pull them out and go ahead and flip them because I do think that will help get them browned on both sides. See, that side is nice and brown. Whew. I 
think that these garlic spring rolls, chicken garlic spring rolls, will freeze really well. What I would do is I would let them cool all the way down and then freeze them on a cookie sheet like this. And then once they were frozen, store them in like a Ziploc bag or something. And then you could take out however many you want and just reheat them in your oven or your toaster oven. And then you can make a big batch of these and not have to go through this whole process every time you wanted them. So I'm gonna flip these over very carefully because they are very hot. My oven's at 425, remember? <laughs> and then we'll put them back in just for a few more minutes to get the other side nice and golden brown. I think if you have an air fryer, you don't have to flip them. I think the air fryer cooks better from both sides at once. If you have had this uh, frozen dinner before and you make these homemade, I would love to know how close I got. All right, put them back in the oven. All right, well, they just came out of the oven. I made a quick ranch dip to go with them. So I'm gonna let them, well, I'll let them cool for a few minutes. So we'll see. Still pretty hot before I taste them. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can hear Watson tiptoeing around there. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. I would love to know what you think. And if you get a chance, make sure you check out Squirmy and Grub's channel. They're a pretty hilarious couple. So let's go ahead and taste one of these. Okay, Shane, I'll give it to you. If these taste anything like your lean cuisine, these are really good. So thank you for sharing something with me through a different method. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.